very much, John. Uh, good morning, everybody. Can you all hear me there? Yeah, okay. Um, I suppose given the august setting that we're in here in Croke Park and the tradition of the winning captains on All-Ireland Day to start their speeches with Ta Oz on Down Orum, which for those of you who don't understand Irish means the joys of the world are upon me, I think. Well, they're certainly not upon me in facing you today, so I hope I can deliver this to you and uh, happy to take any questions or points of clarification afterwards. Um, so I've been asked to talk to you about accreditation framework for driving change. So I'm really going to use the experiences that I've had in Mount Carmel Hospital for the last 13 or 14 months and relating that back to accreditation and how we use that accreditation process to get us from where we are to where we, where we were to where we are, which I hope is in a better place now. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the background to the hospital the environmental issues, both external and internal, the emphasis that is on patient safety, and again, that has been touched on, particularly by John in his, um, in his presentation earlier. Um, what we faced at Mount Carmel through a combination of issues, leading us, I think, to the perfect storm. Um, how we drove change in the organization using strategy, structure, process, and outcome and those are very relevant, I think, in the JCI documentation. Uh, what did we do? Um, is there room for change in the accreditation process itself? And again, some people have touched on that earlier. And where are we now? So in terms of Mount Carmel Hospital, basically it's the oldest private hospital in Ireland. Opened in 1949, owned and managed by a religious order, the Little Company of Mary's, uh, of Mary. Uh, changed hands in 2005 for a lot of money um, in that period between 2000 and 2010 that John referred to earlier this morning. Uh, the economic downturn uh, hit us in 2008, just about four years ago, uh, late September. And so the hospital was absorbed into NAMA, the National Assets Management Agency, in about 2010 as part of a wider property portfolio of the owner uh, who bought the hospital for all that money in 2005. Um, the external environment um, uh, during that period um, is significant. Again, very major reductions in the level of private insurance cover, down uh, close enough to 10% in a period of three and a half years or thereabouts. Uh, reductions in some of the reimbursement rates from our insurers, uh, reductions in the National Treatment Purchase Fund, increasing demand out there with our elderly population, and again, lots of constraints on supply, both in the public and indeed in the private system with the new consultant's contract and so on. Um, and competition in the greater Dublin area, the rate private hospitals. So again, a lot of competition in quite a condensed area of the country. Um, the internal environment, again, in terms of the overall finances at Mount Carmel, there was an impairment on the loan, um, which obviously was very significant given the, the purchase price. There was a qualification to the accounts um, of going concern, which again poses all sorts of difficulties um, for trading. Um, profit and loss year on year down 11% down 7% uh, last year, and a cost base which was, relatively speaking, fixed. So very difficult to, um, to disturb that or change it. Activity, again, following the same pattern, 2009 to 10, down 15%, 10 to 11, down 14%. Maternity services, which is one of the bedrocks of our, um, of our service, down 14%, recovered a little bit last year, and day cases more or less stable. Um, hand in glove with all of that, growing um, emphasis on safety. And these are just some of the examples. New competence rules for doctors, the national standards um, uh, set out by HICWA, JCI, which is ongoing, uh, the state's claims agency, which is very relevant to Mount Carmel because of our um, maternity services. Um, 
major emphasis again on incident reporting and managing complaints and a more knowledgeable public out there um, who clearly you know, have uh, quick and easy access to lots of things in the internet and so on. Um, so again, growing uh, level of complaints. And the Commission on Patient Safety in 2008, again, very significant in making rec recommendations around user involvement, openness, uh, culture change, evidence-based practice, audit, and so on. All the things that uh, people would be familiar with um, in a quality environment. So, in terms of Mount Carmel, the perfect storm, both internally and externally, leading to a lot of uncertainty about the future, a um, lot of instability, a lot of fear, concern among the staff, um, you know, are we going to survive? Will we be liquidated? Uh, and so on. Um, retaining staff became a huge issue, particularly consultant medical staff, who are clearly the, the driving force of any uh, business in the private healthcare sector. Major issues around cash flow, paying the wages on a Friday evening um, versus paying creditors who are looking for money or the withdrawal supplies. And we've had that experience. Um, Inability to borrow, inability to expand um, uh, overdraft facilities, constant monitoring once we got into the NAMA process, they appointed um, a group of management consultants who continued to monitor the performance on a monthly basis. And again, a dent in confidence in the brand um, because these things are very public, they get out there, they're well publicized, um, they're in the media, particularly when there's a qualification on your accounts. So, um, a framework for driving change. How? Um, again, the relevance of structure, process, and outcome cannot be underestimated, and that comes through loud and clear in the um, JCI documentation. We had received accreditation um, on the uh, during the three previous surveys. So over a, an eight to 10 year period, um, we'd been in a credit hospital. Um, following my appointment last August, we had a very, very short time frame to survey. That doesn't mean that a lot of work had been done. Um, it surely had. But um, I did get a little bit of a shock to the system when I was told you got about 10 weeks to a JCI survey, which actually wasn't in my contract of employment. Um, <laughs> So a time for cool heads and an opportunity um, to get a lot done in a very focused way. Change management, just to touch on this, and again, this is something that probably all of you will be familiar with, but it's set out very clearly there by Cotter, who's the um, renowned expert um, on change. And again, I'm not going to go through these things in detail, but um, communication, I think, is very important, empowering um, uh, staff so that they work with you and particularly the very last one there institutionalizing new approaches because um, somebody mentioned in one of the earlier um, presentations that if quality is out there in the back office or the side office where you go to when you got a problem you really do have a problem unless you institutionalize it so that it becomes part and parcel of everybody's job so that's particularly important accreditation we viewed it as a robust process to have a good look at ourselves, to have a good look at our strategy, structures, processes, and outcomes. And I'm going to touch a little bit on those in a moment. Uh, an opportunity to introduce a structured work plan over a 12-month period, um, to put in place a change management agenda. And we did that. An opportunity, taking all of those things into account, to start restoring confidence both internally and among the public. And we saw it as a key step to business survival. So just in terms of those very cold, abstract terms, strategy, structure, process, and outcome, we all sort of rattle them off the top of our heads every now and again without really thinking through um, what they mean and finding out that in fact they're not so cold after all when we begin to look at them in detail. So the way I look at strategies it's more longer term planning that should be used to inform an annual business plan or an annual service plan. 
Structure to me is no different than a physical structure, um, a place where you carry out business, like Croke Park, here's a place to play games, sport, most of the time. Um, in terms of organization structure, it's not always visible <coughs> all of the time, but it's um, a mechanism to enable one to deliver on the strategy. In other words, how things get organized. Processes, again, a very cold word, and we talk about it a lot, but to me, it's quite a simple concept in, in terms of healthcare. It's what doctors do, what nurses do, what managers do, what allied health professions do, what catering staff do, housekeeping staff do. And that really, to me, is where the quality agenda um, fits in best. And I know it's relevant to all other aspects of organization, but that is the real test of quality. How good are the things that all of those staff disciplines in healthcare do? And the outcomes, um, the result of the processes. Um, and again, in healthcare, they can be a bit difficult to measure at times. Um, because the tools to measure them are quite complex. Um, there's always an issue about attributing an, an outcome back to an intervention. In other words, um, did my hip replacement really make me walk better? The answer is probably yes. But in mental health or elderly care, that attribution of an intervention to an outcome can be quite difficult and complex. So what did we do? Um, we put in place a 12-month work plan. We um, developed a new strategy, um, informed the business plan. Um, we put in place a new organization structure. Um, when I came along, the management team consisted of a number of administrators um, meeting once a week or once a fortnight. Um, no real involvement of clinicians and clinical practice. Um, so we tried to include everybody in that. And we tried to have um, three levels in the organization so that one could visualize the top connecting with the bottom, or more importantly, the bottom of the organization connecting with the top quickly and easily. And ensuring that there was cross-connection as well between the non-clinical supports like finance and HR on the one hand, the service delivery part, and then the clinical supports like radiology and pathology and so on. Communications, vitally important. This takes time and it takes effort and it's always difficult, but at the same time, you got to do it. Um, next week will be the fourth um, time that I've managed to meet all staff um, in, the, in Mount Carmel since I started. And in between those meetings, we try to give written updates, um, written communication, um, management by walkabout, talking to people, telling people what's happening, using weekly management meetings uh, as well. So it's really vitally important because um, the type of reaction that I got when I started to meet the staff was, well, um, who owns the hospital? Um, is it owned by NAMA, etc.? All those kind of questions that people actually didn't know about. How are the finances? They didn't know and probably didn't want to know. And I keep telling them there's a very direct link between patient and paycheck, particularly in the, in the private system. Um, so just to emphasize, one cannot do enough of that. And you'll always get feedback that, oh, there's no communication around here. That's a stark answer. If something goes wrong in the hospital, the maintenance guys usually get blamed anyway, whether there's something in theater or clinical practice. Um, a change management plan, we put that in place looking at every aspect of what we do right across the organization. And critically, the action. So you can write all these grand plans and everybody says, oh, okay, that's great, yeah, we all buy into that. But actually making the changes, doing something about it is the critical piece. And that's oftentimes where people balk at that um, in my experience in, um, in the healthcare system in this country. Um, processes, I've spoken about that. Um, uh, earlier, the importance though of getting it right will usually lead to good outcomes. I think that's a critical piece um, uh, uh, in terms of uh, process. Um, and I recall Professor Tom Keane, the National Director for Cancer Services, who has um, since returned to Canada, but came here from the Canadian system, an Irish uh, person, um, who was very emphatic that in the Canadian experience, 
um, when their crash hit, I think about 20 years before ours did, and they were strapped for money and resources and so on, they got the biggest gains from changing the processes. In other words, the things that people do, and I think you got a classic example of that this morning in John's presentation and what um, HCI and others have done in Australia with the laboratory and so on. But this is really slow, difficult, turgid work because what you're doing is you're changing the habits of a lifetime. Why should we change? We always did things this way around here. Um, so that's a huge challenge, but huge gains as well. So we can change strategies, because it's very easy to write a strategy and communicate with some people and groups and organizations, and everybody says, ah, that's grand. And you can do the same with structure, and you get a bit of resistance. But when you go at this, the process piece, that's where you really get the resistance, but the huge benefits and gains as well. Um, and clearly, doing more with less, the key to it is maintaining quality and using a process like um, accreditation to do that. Accreditation, the driver, I'm not gonna bore you with this slide, but again, the kind of key issues that we addressed um, at Mount Carmel, and again, they're all laid out there in the JCI documentation, things like ac access, to access to care, continuity care, uh, assessment of patients, care of patients, anesthe anesthesia, and so on. And what I've done is highlighted that all these things are processes that require change or doing things differently. Just continue on there over the page. Again, infection control, facility management and safety, staff qualifications and education. So the only one there, governance, leadership and direction, that probably relates more to strategy and structure than process. But again, this slide is just to highlight for you the importance of managing processes, changing processes, doing more with less, addressing um, the issues with your people in the organization. Um, just a couple of um, concluding slides. The accreditation process is the room for change. A three-year time lag is a huge issue, as I see it, because lots of things can happen in a three-year period. And I know from talking to uh, Dr. Ramponi in recent times, um, JCI are considering um, some uh, unannounced visits, perhaps, um, uh, in the inter-survey periods. Question, is the room for self-assessment? Um, I was delighted to hear Dr. Bueno making reference to the EFQM model. And again, that's something that I've come across uh, in my past. It's a very structured self-assessment system that people can use without any huge degree of um, external facilitation or input um, periodically, say once every six months or twice a year or something like that, that will give you a very good um, structured assessment of where you stand relative to um, written criteria. And again, um, something like that, I think, where um, once these unannounced visits begin to happen, one can, um, if you like, assess against your own self-assessment. So it's not just somebody hopping on a plane in Chicago, arriving um, in, well, I think we've had an airport out near Mount Carmel recently, given the mix-up with Google and so on, but in Dublin Airport, arriving to the hospital and saying we're here to visit. Whereas if there's a structured system of self-assessment, um, you know, you have a sense that, of what's going to be reviewed, what's happening, what's coming, and let that be the, the basis on which both JCI and the, um, the particular hospital can work in a, in a conjoint way between these three-year um, surveys. And again, uh, we touched again this morning on having uh, our, our, on systems. And again, I'd like to see some sort of a standardized system like that. So that in other words, if you adopt this system, let it be EFQM or whatever, and you drive that vehicle carefully and well and keep it between the ditches and so on over a three year period, it will more often than not, or more likely than not, lead you to accreditation. So again, it's just some food, food for thought for um, uh, Mark and Carlo to, to perhaps uh, reflect on. So where are we now at Mount Carmel? Again, the accreditation has been secured for the next uh, three years. That was last October, so we've uh, two years to run. The business has stabilized in terms of the activity and the revenue. Uh, we're not out of the woods, but it certainly has stabilized. The cost base is reducing. There's a big chunk of um, further cost to come out of that cost base. Um, the buy-in of staff. 
That's a big statement. But um, I think it's true in a lot of cases. Um, senior clinical support, again, because of the dependence on um, uh, consultant practice and so on in the private system, that's very important. And again, what we try to do is meet all of the consultants twice yearly to ensure that they're fully briefed and so on, aware of what we're doing. The changes and improvements are continuing. We've got a very loyal customer base. And um, clearly, um, a hospital is not much used to NAMA. So the ownership issue has to be resolved at some point in time. And the hospital must change ownership. Um, NAMA are not the owners. It's still technically in the name of the previous owner. Um, but again, because of the nature of what NAMA does, um, they will want to um, resolve that ownership issue and try and get some of their investment or return on that for the Irish taxpayers. What does the future look like? Well, we can't control the external environment. Um, if more people drop out of health insurance, we don't have control over that. Um, but we can certainly control what happens in our own environment. Um, safety is not optional. And again, the Commission on Patient Safety um, the HICWA standards and so on provide the forerunner for licensing. So I think this is a challenge that everybody must face up to. We feel we're better placed to compete in a new world where money will follow the patient. If we move into universal health care, that sort of um, divide, if you like, between the public and the private system uh, should become uh, less obvious and more so money following patients. Um, there's an opportunity for us at Mount Carmel in the area of medical travel, medical tourism, and we hope to bring that to fruition shortly. Um, there's new models of collaboration, public and private, and again, we've got spare capacity. We're in discussions with the health service executive about providing some services for them. And why not? You know, we hear all the time, every week, in the news, in the media, about the pressure on the public system. So why not collaborate? Why not make the best use of the resources that we've got and get over ideological hang-ups? And focus on doing what we do to the highest standards. So again, just to round off, why change? Why accredit? Well, to me, the patient safety goals set out in the JCI documentation does equal patient-centeredness. And we talk an awful lot about that. It's... Um, uh, you know, one of the buzzwords in the Irish healthcare system, but what does it really mean? And I think it's best set out there. And it's certainly supported um, by the national standards, the recently, recently launched standards um, by HICWA. Again, it talks about patient-centered care and support, effective care, safe care, better health, leadership, governance, all the things that make that overlap with the JCI process. Again, statutory regulation, and you saw that in the earlier slides, some like 48 statutory bodies set up in a 10-year period. Not going to go away, huge issue. Licensing, why? We owe it to our patients. I think that has to be the bottom line in everything we do um, in the healthcare system.